Hi everybody, it's Scott here from Scott's Permaculture. Um, a couple of years ago, um, I started planting my food forest or forest garden, and I thought uh, it's probably now is a good time to uh, give you a bit of an update and to see what's actually been happening. What basically, used to be something which only ever good enough for grass. So here we go. Let's have a look. So this is basically the kind of growth you can get if you do it right on pretty poor land in just two years. So we have shrubs here like pigeon pea, larger ones up here, lachina, or our emerging canopy. We have border plants here which are Queensland arrowroot. If you have a look down here you can see that we've got what can be has been classified in Australia as a weed. It's actually Singapore daisy but once it takes hold it provides a really good ground cover which keeps the moisture in the soil and excludes the grass of which what we're chasing, basically what we're chasing. We have a, uh, a leguminous plant here which is uh, called ice cream bean. Uh, it's a uh, South African plant. Um, in this burst we have fruit trees. This one is a uh, emperor mandarin. We have this tree here, it's just coming back, which is actually deciduous, which is a cassia and they, they actually uh, put um, nitrogen into the ground which is great. More pigeon pea, another fruit tree over here which is a mango. In the background here we have mugwort which is a very good mulch plant for us. Okay it's um, it breaks down really quickly it's got a, quite a strong taste so it seems to uh, repel a lot of insects as well. We have a uh, a small ornamental sage here which you can use small amounts of that with your cooking. We have a butterfly pea which is climbing pretty much everywhere. We have to, sometimes we have to uh, cut them back away from the fruit trees because they tend to take over but they're a legume and they, they certainly put uh, nourishment into the soil. This one here is a crotalaria. Some people call them rattle pods. Um, they uh, again are really good legume and a very solid fast growing legume as well and you can see just down the bottom here there's some turmeric which is coming up and that was planted as part of the initial food forest just over here we have an apple a tropical apple and then behind that a cassava lots and lots of edibles and support species in a very small area. Now, okay, here's a loquat that I've grown from seed. They're quite a lovely um, a yellow coloured fruit, beautiful to taste. Another mango. Another ice cream bean right next to a mango. A mulberry, in fact we have a, a fruit here. This one's been in the ground less than a year. Let's just try that. Oh, how much beautiful. And you can see there's lacina, mugwort everywhere. I've recently done a chop and drop, as you can see, around the fruit trees. But it's also, I've got enough here that I can start doing a bit more. That improves the soil. Gives the micro something to break down. In here, not so many fruit trees, that's a tamarind tree, which is going quite well. That's the dog. Say hello, Sophie. She thought I was somebody else. Um, another, another apple, tropical apple. You can see here with what's happening with the, uh, with the way the peas wrapped around that. We can uh, deal with that. Um, more cassava, more ice cream bean, lemongrass. So I guess what you should be getting the idea of at the moment is the diversity in a really small area. And also what would normally be considered to be overplanting. Here's another cassie here growing. The idea of these cassies is to give the swale along here some nice shade as time goes on. On the, on the swale here we have a pomegranate, a lemon, Lisbon lemon. More of our support stuff, Atu Itu Mango. And down here, we actually have a 
a mandarin from the Emperor Mandarin, which is pretty close. I might have picked that. Would be my uh, for my lunch today. Here you can see on the swale a tropical plum, and it's for its size, it's actually quite well and truly loaded. Lots more flowers coming, so there'll be a lot more fruit on that as well. Now we're looking across the top of the swale uh, where our forest garden is, and you can see that we, in fact, we've got quite a few um, there's mulberries, there's another loquat, more butterfly pea here, mugwort. A finger lime, which I thought was actually killed by the cyclone, which has come back nicely. You can see how we've chopped and dropped around the uh, the drip line of that. Another uh, lucina, and then we've got here a, um, a macadamia tree. Okay, uh, quite a slow-growing tree, but not doing too badly at the moment. And again, we've chopped and dropped around it. Here at the base of the swale, you can actually see some lucerne that we planted some time ago and didn't really take until uh, just recently. The decent rains that we've had. Again, what we're looking for is diversity. Okay, this is another part of our food forest. It's a little bit different. It was planted a couple of months uh, after the first part you had a look at. This plant here is a Moringa olifera. There's a lot of vitamin C and phosphorus in the leaves. Again, we have a mango. We've got some interesting stuff here. This is called wind cassia, little yellow flowers. It's a ground cover that I planted by seed recently, oh, about a year ago, and it's starting to actually um, flower and seed and it'll take off and hopefully exclude as much of the grass as we possibly can. Another mango here, basil, which is a, a Thai basil which I've thrown spare seeds I had in here. This stuff here is uh, cobbler's pegs, it's really nasty sort of um, burrs that get in and stick in your socks. I'd like, like to get rid of that if we could have. More Moringa, Moringa Olifera. Okay, here's a, a new uh, orange that we've put in the ground. That went in about uh, three months ago. Uh, and just over the back there, there's a mulberry, apple, more of the Queensland arrowroot. You can see some grasses which are endemic in this area. Some of them are weeds, but some of them are endemic. We're trying to basically exclude those if we possibly can. Now along this artificial fence that I've put here, we've planted dragon fruit and we've also planted um, passion fruit as well. So we've already, I think we've got uh, 20 or 30 fruit off the uh, dragon fruit after one year, um, which is fantastic. And we hope to get the same, if not more, and also a whole lot of passion fruit this year. More wind cassia. <coughs> uh, this is a cassia grown to shade the, sail, the swale. Another lacina, needs cutting down a bit, bringing back. Ring Olifera. Uh, some soft stone tomato through here. This one's a little nice little uh, shrubby cassia which I found on the side of the road and, and collected the seeds. Another cassia, more mugwort. Little uh, mango that I planted a little while ago is coming to come on now. Uh, an orange, which is a navel orange, I believe. A bit more of that Singapore daisy. You can see that we're not walking very far, and we've got all these different species of plant and varieties all in the same area. There's another cassava there, more lacina, lemongrass. That's a um, not a popcorn, I think a popcorn cassia, um, or cassia lata actually, not popcorn cassia. You can see here that the uh, Singapore daisy is doing really well and that's starting to take hold, which is great news for us. Another cassava, more lemongrass, more Thai basil, another cassia, lemongrass. This is a native fruit tree. Uh, I think it's a birdie can plum. Um, can't be sure. I'll know when it, when it gets a bit bigger. Okay. Mugwort, lacina, ice cream bean, mango, cassava, mango, lemongrass, cassava, cassia, 
Makina, lemongrass. This is an old uh, cut, cut cradle area which is nearly gone. It's done its job, it's pioneered through, put nitrogen in the soil. Apple, another mango. So you're starting to get a sense of how densely packed and stacked these features are in the permaculture garden. Another cradle area here, beautiful flowers at the moment. So this is the top part of the swale above the food forest. As you can see, this dwarf mulberry is doing very, very well. Some beautiful fruit on it, nice big fruit. And this, this particular one is very juicy. Mmm, amazing. Tropical apple, actually got some apples on it. Let's see how they go this year. Lucerne, lots of different grasses, we've got to cut them back soon. There's a mango in the mucks there as well. This is a Tipawana Tipu, racecourse tree. Grows very quickly, fixes nitrogen. Curry leaf plant. This is a fig. We didn't do, haven't done too well with our figs. We probably don't have enough water for them, but we're giving them a go anyway. A mango, it's a Keats mango. Low fruiting or late fruiting one. Molokina, Cassiolata. That's that navel orange we talked about before just down there. This is a lychee. Okay, first looks like we're going to get some fruit from there this year, which is fantastic. I'll have a mugwort, Cassiolata, and Brazilian cherry. Uh, now these have really interesting astringent fruit, fantastic in jellies. I like quite, quite like eating them when they're uh, very ripe, nice and red. As you can see, these are still yellow at the moment, so not re ready to eat. Okay, so that's the top of the swale now. So what you've seen is a food forest about two years old, very densely packed, going quite well. Um, no maintenance basically on it at all, apart from a bit of chopping and dropping. It's not watered, it's not irrigated. Um, so you can do this, If you, we can do this on our soil here, which is a serpentine soil, high in magnesium and nickel. You can do this at your place. Okay, goodbye for now. Talk to you next time. For information about our permaculture workshops, uh, you can go online to our website, which is http colon backslash backslash www.scotts1tpermaculture.com. On that, you'll find in our bookings area when we're running uh, online courses and workshops, and um, you'll be able to, if you want to, you can book on that or give me a call uh, on my mobile number. I uh, look forward to catching up with some of you who are interested in uh, permaculture workshops and online courses, so bye for now.